Hi everyone, welcome to my latest vlog. Uh, this one is about Captain Marvel movie. Uh, as I had promised all of you that I would be making a vlog about it and uh, today is the day. Uh, now I'm going to be sharing my opinion because uh, I've been a comic book reader for a long long time and Carol Danvers happens to be one of the uh, one of the most important characters uh, within my reading preferences with the reason being is that I am not aware how many of you know X-Men history but uh, one of the major characters uh, within the X-Men universe happens to be Rogue who acquired her uh, superhuman strength and uh, flight by absorbing uh, powers from Carol Danvers when she was uh, a member of the Avengers and work, uh, was known as Warbird for a great period of time. Uh, this was after when Carol was introduced as Miss Marvel in the late 70s. So uh, this character is a very uh, is one of Marvel's best creations, uh, not only within the uh, female segment of uh, superhero characters but overall. Uh, and uh, in the last few years or almost the last decade uh, this character has become uh, a front uh, first year character uh, that is now standing in line or uh, uh, in line with characters like Iron Man and Captain America and so forth so first of all to uh, talk about Carol Danvers uh, and the Captain Marvel movie, we need to understand the concept about Captain Marvel itself. Now, Captain Marvel was a character that was created in the late 60s, uh, and he was basically, it was created by Stanley and Gene Colan, and uh, w what happened was that uh, this was a superhero, an alien superhero who came from the planet Kree to planet Earth, uh, concerning for, for the purposes of espionage and uh, research and to relay back that information to his home planet and to the supreme intelligence now what happened during that time was that uh, it was uh, the concept was well received and uh, uh, the original character Marvel uh, was the first Captain Marvel that readers came across and since his relationship with the Marvel Space Universe was established from day one, he was involved with characters like Thanos, like Drax, like, and much of Avengers space adventures uh, that came about during the 70s and the 80s and so forth. Now in this respect, uh, Marvel was the first Captain Marvel and uh, the reference, his reference is there uh, in the movie. Uh, but I'm going to come to it later. Uh, then later on, uh, uh, another character by the name of Monica Rambeau, she was introduced as Captain Marvel. Uh, Monica Rambeau uh, was among the... Uh, she, she came before Luke Cage, by the way. Some people say that Luke Cage is the first African-American superhero. Well, uh, that's a bit incorrect because Monica Rambeau was the... F uh, and even Falcon, if one can think of the Avengers Falcon, they they were the they came before Luke Cage and they were African American superheroes. Monica Rambeau was important because she took the mantle of Captain Marvel. She briefly became a mem uh, a leader of the Avengers team and at a time when uh, race relations in America uh, were quite worse than what we find today. Even though today the situation isn't ideal at all, but. Uh, this is like we're talking about the civil rights era, the beginning of the Vietnam era. Things were complicated back then. But to have uh, an African-American female uh, taking the mantle of uh, Captain Marvel and then briefly leading the Avengers as well uh, is a huge feat on its own. Uh, something which Marvel doesn't uh, claim. Uh, credit to it while it should and a lot of people st don't talk about it as much as they should be so uh, Carol Danvers was uh, usually first uh, the personality of her that was introduced to, to the readers was that she was an educated uh, bureaucrat working in the Pentagon uh, uh, in the United States Air Force uh, branch and 
as a civilian bur bureaucrat and uh, she started out as a damsel in distress kind of a role within the Captain Marvel storyline when Marvel was there and later on uh, when people realized that uh, readers appreciated her despite being a supporting character uh, in the late 70s Marvel decided to introduce her as Miss Marvel and we know that uh, she, uh, Carol Danvers happens to be half Cree and half human because of uh, what we also saw in the movie uh, so in this respect Carol was launched as a superhero character well late into the 70s now comes the personality about Carol Carol is not uh, a, a funny or an uh, bending over backwards uh, cuteness overload kind of a character the one that we saw in the movie uh, Carol uh, is a pretty serious character and who has gone through a lot within the comic books universe one of the episodes that I told you about happens to be that when Rogue uh, had uh, absorbed her powers so uh, and then uh, her binary uh, force uh, that again was introduced within the X-Men storyline not in the Avengers storyline so Carol Danvers is one of the unique characters because it's as she is important to Avengers as she is important to X-Men's history something similar to what we find in the character Beast Beast uh, uh, Dr. Hank McCoy uh, whom you we are coming across in a lot of X-Men movies and all he well, despite being the founding member of X-Men, he or sorry, the first student uh, of uh, Charles Xavier, he also ended up being uh, an Avengers member for a good number of years. So Carol and Hank McCoy share this uh, dual uh, relationship with the Avengers, uh, Marvel, uh, and X-Men, two of Marvel's most popular superhero franchises. So, brief person, uh, I was having a lot of expectations, but at the same time, I was b being a bit cautious because Benedict Cumberbatch happens to be my one of my favorite actors, and I really didn't like the way he acted in Doctor Strange movie. I mean, his performance in Avengers Endgame was far, far, far better and Cumberbatch like than it was in the Doctor Strange movie because in Doctor Strange movie he was acting all childish. Um, same thing for Brie Larson in uh, Captain Marvel movies uh, and I don't blame uh, the actors I blame the directors uh, and the uh, screenplay writers that if you cannot understand the character the soul of the character by going through the comics then you can never be able to adapt them properly and uh, this movie became a victim of uh, the political narrative that we are finding in the world today uh, women empowerment is a serious issue uh, equality for women again is a serious issue women ha are fighting against harassment but these things should not be used to define a superhero Carol Danvers story isn't about feminism Carol Danvers story isn't about uh, a fight against female harassment it is not about against women empowerment it is not about uh, making her the most powerful Avenger or the most powerful superhero within Marvel Universe because in Marvel Universe technically there is no such thing because uh, I mean show, we saw Carol being becoming so powerful that she flies in space and she is able to scare off an entire armada of Kree that led by Ron and the Accuser Mm, well, uh, if that is the case, then I think I can think of another famous Marvel character who was uh, lethally more powerful than her, and her name uh, is Phoenix. And we're going to be seeing a movie about the Phoenix saga shortly for, from the uh, X Men franchise. Similarly, there was another character, Michael Korvac. This is a very popular Avengers uh, story arc, uh, Korvac saga. This isn't Carol Danvers that I grew up reading, frankly. And even if I look at uh, uh, Carol becoming Captain Marvel and uh, you know her powers uh, 
becoming enhanced and all that this movie was less about the superhero captain marvel about carol danvers it was more about feminism it was about feminization uh, of uh, the originals the fixed aspects of the storyline seeing marvel the first captain marvel uh, being shown as a woman was quite disappointing because as someone who grew up reading i was really looking forward initially i was under the impression that maybe jude law would be playing marvel as somebody who passes on the on the torch to carol but uh, uh, what they did with marvel was quite disappointing that's number one the other thing is the entire story it's a very very bad uh, adaptation uh, in terms of like women have gone through a lot uh, even in uh, countries like the united states we often think people who are outside the united states that women are better off over there but no we always remember how difficult it was for them to uh, be recognized as equals within the us military within Uh, the defense establishment and so forth and the time th- th- this movie takes place in the 90s and that was primarily the point when things started to change uh, we remember D- Demi Moore's uh, GI Jane movie as well and her story could have been told in a much more relatable way than it was right now this was like a so cheap se- feminine f- feminist soap opera that was being shoved down the throat that was more catered towards people who uh, you know uh, are uh, laughing at slapstick comedy uh, cheap slapstick comedy scenes uh, and who care about the goose uh, cat character more than the actual superhero and the storyline itself worst thing that i saw was the uh, dip- with the portrayal of uh, Nick Fury and uh, Maria Rambo now Maria Rambo uh, because Monica has been shown as uh, Maria's daughter in this movie so we can expect that Monica Rambo might be becoming Captain Marvel in upcoming MCU movies but Maria and uh, Nick Fury they became victims of racial story stereotyping without anyone noticing them. Nick Fury was reminded me of uh, earlier Hollywood adaptations of African Americans in which they were always being shown as colorful playful uh, doing silly stuff and uh, you know uh, yes yes sir and yes ma'am kind of a character this we are talking about Nick Fury the guy who becomes director of shield the guy whom we saw in the winter soldier the guy uh he is a serious war veteran he is a survivor of world war 2 he has survived the cold war men like them are not all jumping with joy and all playful or kid acting like kids or childish or stupid for that matter when they have survived two war, uh, world wars i mean cold war one itself in itself was world war but it was a co- covert or uh, a light version of world war because there were so many spheres that were involved in which uh, a lot of different countries and their military personnel had participated how can you ha- show a guy who is so serious when he is being shown in his la- later day adaptations and while working for 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 the feds he is being shown as some kind of an immature uh, person and who is just uh, you know a, a boy toy or a, um, or a or a sidekick to Brie Larson that's not uh, Nick Fury i'm sorry Nick Fury is a supporting character is a very important supporting character is a central supporting character within the Marvel universe and Marvel cinematic universe and to show him like this is i think quite disrespectful uh, for me towards the character and the portrayal of a guy who happens to be an uh, an african american war veteran who is now uh, a senior officer within the feds uh, being shown in this way 
Then we have uh, uh, Maria Rambo. Now Maria Rambo, okay, everybody was complaining about this movie, uh, The Green Book, I think it's the name that won the Academy, that this movie has been given the award because it shows the white man as the savior and everything. Well, I've got news for you people. Uh, Captain Marvel movie shows a white female as the savior of the universe. Let's just forget about uh, Mississippi down south. This is like uh, the entire universe. So, and then we have Maria Rambeau, who is you know like uh, this this Uncle Tom kind of a character whose uh, main objective is just to uh, you know just say yes to what Carol wants and you know, just do practically whatever she is thinking and saying whatever she or whatever she think uh, she's saying or whatever she's doing. Her job is to just conform to it basically and I mean all of this just got washed away simply because there was a female superhero that was the main lead in this movie uh, I think by far uh, the best superhero female superhero movie is still Wonder Woman um, and uh, Captain Marvel had a huge opportunity uh, they simply lost it uh, and then last but certainly not the least the scrolls this is an alien advanced shape-shifting lethal zealously lethal uh, race and I was quite shocked to see how they were portrayed as like you know people who are harmless and good and fun loving and that Skrull general Talos is like uh, talking in that Australian accent okay fine uh, that might be a reason why they showed him showed them landing in Australia so they adopted the accent but Skrulls are not what they have been shown they are as ruthless they are as merciless as the Kree are and uh, they if anyone wants to read there have been a lot of storylines involving the Skrulls the Skrulls were introduced as arch nemesis of the Fantastic Four and later they became involved with the Avengers as well as the X-Men and if one has to really really read uh, one of the best storylines ever uh, that involve Kree and the Skrulls or just Skrulls I just give you two references. One happens to be the 1969 or early 70s Kree Skrull War, which was written by Roy Thomas and which was uh, drawn by Sal Buscema and uh, Neil Adams, the famous Batman artist. And then second one is uh, Brian Michael Bendis's Secret Invasion. You see, uh, when and I, I challenge you all that you go and read these materials only then you will realize what what you have missed in the movie and uh, uh, it's it's just it's just a very immature way of uh, approaching the superhero concept the the material that made these characters lovable for millions around and to see that happen uh, on the silver screen, it's just heartbreaking. It's just painful. My biggest worry now is that what has been done here it does not affect uh, the Avengers Endgame movie because Infinity War, it was beyond my expectation. It was so perfectly executed the way they took the uh, storylines of Infinity Gauntlet and Jonathan Hickman's uh, Infinity Saga the way they meshed them and made, created a whole uh, an altogether new story out of it and the, the 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 characters the way they have been portrayed the cull obsidian of uh, Thanos Thanos himself I mean this is like the best adaptation ever Josh Brolin his acting, his 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 dialogue delivery, the people who wrote the script. I mean, the Russo brothers deserve a huge amount of credit. Now, what I have seen in Captain Marvel movie, 
I'm quite afraid that we might end up with an outcome in Avengers Endgame that we might not be pleased to watch. I am much for uh, movies that are in line, that are depicting the soul of the character because you cannot copy the exact storyline onto the silver screen. It's not possible. Some storylines, if they are being adapted exactly onto the silver screen, the movie time is going to go up to four hours or six hours. This is just an example. So it is challenging to, you know, get the main characteristics, the attributes of the characters, the story, the plot, and then having it uh, adapted onto the silver screen uh, and then uh, basically, you know, getting admiration, appreciation from not just a particular gender or not just some particular sexual orientation. No, it's superheroes aren't about that. First thing comes is the superhero, the identity or the positioning of him or herself. Second comes their orientation, their uh, gender and everything. Spider-Woman was introduced as a character. Nobody looked at her as a woman. Everybody looked at her as a superhero. Uh, Wasp. Miss Marvel, who is now Captain Marvel. Uh, Sue Richards from the Fantastic Four. Uh, Jean Grey from the X-Men. Storm from the X-Men. Yes, they are women. I can see that. Everybody can see that they are women. I can see characters from uh, uh, other DC, uh, other storylines, even within Marvel. Like for example, North Star. I know that what his sexual orientation is, but that's not what we readers care about. What we care about is that the superhero should matter in the end. So I don't understand what's the fuss uh, about. Uh, this new breed of superhero fans who has an issue if the hero is white, who have an issue if the hero is male. Uh, we had a similar kind of an issue concerning the Iron Fist uh, TV series on Netflix. It's not about that. Superheroism is about the character. It's about the real story of the character, not about their orientation or their gender. Again, I'm reiterating that example that I, being a comic book fan, I, being someone who is a diehard Marvel fan, I, my favorite uh, superhero character happens to be Black Widow. I know she is a female, but for me, she is a superhero first. For me, Storm uh, of the X Men, uh, Jean Grey and my all-time favorite super uh, heroine uh, which is a spider woman now it's not for me to say that oh i'm a middle eastern guy and i need to have a middle eastern superhero so that he looks like me or uh, no for me spider woman is a super heroine i like the character i like her story i like uh, the plot that has been set for that character and how she has been interwoven within the Marvel Universe and the role she has played in different storylines. That for me matters the most, not her gender again and not her orientation. Same thing for every other uh, male or female character that I can tell you of. Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight is the Canadian superhero team. Uh, that is the Canadian version of Avengers. Now in that you have uh, a, br a brother and a sister uh, North Star uh, one of the characters North Star he from day one was created as a gay character so but again it was not about his orientation it was about his story uh, his relationship with Alpha Flight his relationship with his sister his 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 uh, adventures that have come about now there are many more I can give you an example of. Hercules, uh, an Avengers member, he is of a different orientation. Deadpool, everybody's favorite. Now, he his uh, orientation is altogether different, but people like Deadpool 
because of who he really is it's not about his gender it's not about uh, who, who he wants to sleep with it's more to do about his his adventures his and what he does in critical moments and what is his moral code uh, is he an anti-hero like Wolverine or the Punisher that's these are the things that make a hero great and I'm sure that a lot of you after watching this vlog uh, s uh, some of you diehard fans of whatever Marvel Universe throws uh, cinematic universe throws at you it's gonna be difficult for you to understand where I'm coming from so the first step would be that I have given you some reading references please go and read those and compare it with what you have been served in the cinematic universe and you will realize that you've been dealt a hand you've been uh, you, you didn't get what you deserve and uh, the other ones are uh, those who just want to create negativity hype out of it that uh, I'm anti-female empowerment or something like that I don't care frankly because uh, my thoughts are incomplete uh, available on the internet uh, on social media platforms and all that let that be uh, the judge but my only request to all superhero fans is that there is a lot of awesome material. Uh, there is a lot of greatness to these characters. And uh, if you keep on relying on what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is offering you, then you, in, in five, 10 years time, you are going to simply forget about it because this is not something you can live with it for the whole life what you do really live with for your whole life is the best of the best stories and the comic book art that goes with it stories that still when you read them it's like you're reading them for the very first time so uh, again in the end I just request that you guys uh, uh, leave your comments share your questions if you have any concerning uh, classic Marvel uh, material and the concept of superheroism and all that and if you like this video that's awesome you subscribe to my channel even better but please don't forget to share my video thank you very much for joining in and I hope to see you next time